Hi, and welcome to Tapped Into Hudson. I'm Steve Lennox, and I'm the publisher of Tap Into Hoboken, Tap Into Bayonne, and Tap Into Jersey City. I want to start first of all by thanking our viewers for tuning in the first two weeks and sticking with us now for our third show. We're going in a little bit of a different direction this week, and we're going to go right to a guest. We're going to go to Tracy Gavant, who's the co-founder of Main Street Pops, which is an arts organization in Hoboken, which is really, as I read the description, Tracy, very similar to Tap Into in a lot of ways, in that you're going hyper-local. You're really trying to connect back with the community. T tell us about the, the growth of, of Main Street Pops, where it came from. Um, yes, absolutely. It's true. We do have a lot in common. Um, so Main Street Pops, we're a pop-up programming company, and um, myself, I'm one of the founders, uh, and I have two partners, and we really created Main Street Pops because we felt like we, had, we were missing that feeling, you know, the, the word Main Street Pops came from, um, that feeling of, of Main Street, that connective communal feeling where you know you used to go down the street and you would support your local merchants and you'd gossip and you'd see your neighbors and you'd wave from across the street and you know that kind of a feeling and you know Main Street has changed with the age of technology and we just wanted to create pr uh, programs and events that uh, would bring people back together um, and so we launched about a year ago uh, in December we did three very successful events uh, and we basically were we started out activating underutilized or unused spaces um, throughout town. Uh, we had a holiday market, we had an art show, and we did this um, sort of holiday photo immersion um, experience, and they were both, all three very, very successful. Uh, and then we started planning a three-day uh, wild and scenic film festival, uh, which is, in, we were a national host of this bigger organization that's based in California that uh, actually travels to 250 locations a year. And so we, uh, it was the big anniversary of Earth Day, big, you know, celebration. We were going to do a three-day live event with, you know, programming and Q&As and parties and, and then COVID happened. COVID happened. So uh, we regrouped and um, decided that really where we were needed, and especially you know, when we thought about our mission and it was to bring people together and connect as a community, uh, we, create, we, we went to Wild and Scenic and uh, they were working on a online program. So we decided that we were going to create three, a series of three fundraising events. Um, and we ended up giving 100% of the proceeds uh, to local charities, you know, the, the Hoboken Shelter, the um, the pantry as well as the COVID relief fund and Mile Square Theater, which is, you know, our local theater, sure. which is obviously still not open um, at this point. And so we raised over, over $20,000 uh, and we did three virtual film festivals uh, with Wild and Scenic and uh, they were also hugely successful and we hope to bring that live someday. So, yeah, I mean, when we talk about you launching in October, November of, of 2019, obviously Hoboken has changed dramatically, as has the world. Yes. But you've, you've adapted and you, you found a way to bring people together, yes. but kept them apart. Why has it been so important, really, over these six months, these seven months of, of separation, mm -hmm. to, to keep the arts so vibrant in a place like Hoboken? Uh, well, we're, we're all three huge believers in, in the arts. Uh, two of us are actually on the board of Mile Square Theater. Uh, arts more than ever, I think, during difficult times. I mean, it, you know, it's very difficult, especially now with Black Lives Matter and some of the other things going on. You know, let's take the election aside. Uh, you know, to have these conversations, everyone is all over the place and, and doesn't want to say the wrong thing, doesn't know how to say it. Um, we're all being barraged with so much information. And, and so the arts really can bring it, bring it home, make it more personal. Uh, and, you know, since the beginning of time, the arts have really reflected the times. Um, and in whatever way that is. Uh, and so we find, especially with the films and with, with paintings, actually with anything, but with, with our particular series that we're doing now, uh, you know, it really is great to have these, the arts, films, storytelling to start those conversations, to open the door to, to you know, have those difficult talks. So. Why is it important to let Everybody in the community knows there's different ways to tell these stories, isn't mm. there? And that's something Main Street Pops is really focused on. Yeah. You're launching a, a, an exhibit. You've done the film festival. You talk about Mile Square Theater, which is obviously premier stage production mm -hmm. company in, in, in the area. It's, it's important to let people know there's different ways to express themselves through the arts. Is that something Main Street Pops really focuses on and, and tries to put out there? Well, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, as a board member of Mile Square Theater, it's been uh, something that has come up in our board meetings for years now that we really wanted to diversify not only our audience outside of just Hoboken um, to the neighboring areas, but also the profile of the demographics so that it was accessible to everybody uh, and also the offerings, you know, um, represent other people's 
stories. Uh, we, we actually produced uh, Pipeline, which was uh, you know, widely successful um, in, going in that direction. But so that was with Miles Square Theater. Uh, and um, with Main Street Pops, you know, the film festival is all about inspiring activism. Uh, and it's about env the environment, really. Uh, but with with this particular, we're, we're curating a pro we curated a program recently called Representation Matters, which is about the intersectionality of social justice and the environment. And um, you know, it's it's just another way to tell a story. You know, you hear twenty percent. You know, only twenty percent of people going to national parks are uh, people of color. Right. It's a percent. Right. Um, yeah, that's disturbing. But you watch a, f a short film about it, and you see the people, um, and you know you, people connect better, and you get the language that you can use to then start a conversation or think of things differently. As you said, making them more accessible. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I bet a lot of residents around here and people watching the show don't realize we have national parks right here in our midst. Right, you go to Patterson, you've got the Great Falls, and of course you've got the Thomas Edison Innovation Center. I mean, we've got those resources available to us, but we're not accessing them. Why is it, do you think, the, before COVID, we weren't right. accessing them? Right. Why is that? Why do you think the public doesn't pay more attention to the fact that we've got these, these assets right here at our, at our doorstep? Yeah, um, I blame everything on technology. <laughs> and I, believe me, I'm a big, you know, we're a big um, proponent of, you know, I'm all over social media and all that, but I think people are spending more and more time you know, whether it be Netflix or whether it be on, on social media or watching television or whatever, you know, we're not connecting as much. And again, that was why we decided to do this. But um, I think, you know, really you have to get that information out there, uh, let people know that it's accessible uh, and inspire them, excite them, do things that matter. You know, as I said, we're doing the film festival. We also have a series, a new pop-up art series that we're working on um, with, with the Pilsner House. And um, that is, Tapping into, di oh, tap into, tapping into, tapping tapping into yep. different um, artists and their visions, you know, and everyone looks at things through a different lens. Uh, and so the more you can hear things from other people's perspectives and be open to that, sometimes it is easier to do that through art, right. through seeing a painting or, you know, a, a play or a film. Right. Celebrating diversity through the arts. That, that's yeah. important in a place like Hoboken in Jersey City in our general region. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and tell us how, how Main Street Pops was sort of born around that idea of, of diversity matters. Well, so when we, when we first uh, cu uh, showed the three fundraising films, uh, film blocks, they were 90-minute um, blocks of, of different sh film shorts uh, about you know, celebrating the environment and, and um, inspiring activism, uh, we had to really view a lot of films to figure out what we wanted to present and what we felt would be best for the audience, you know, our local audience. Um, and we started to realize, especially as all of the, you know, the world was talking about, you know, Black Lives Matter and people of color and, and having their voices and all of that. And we realized, you know, there's a lot of these films. And again, like we watched them, but then as we were made more aware of things, we, we watched them and realized, huh, there's really a lot of overlap um, between the two. And we thought, hmm, we can really take these and, and create something through film. So we approached... Uh, the Wild and Scenic Film Festival, and we work with them to actually curate this particular uh, film like that we're offering now. It's called Representation Matters. Tracy, we're gonna come back to Representation Matters after oh, this break. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all fates and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 
9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Hi, and welcome back. I'm joined here today by Tracy, with Tracy Gavant, co-founder of Main Street Pops. Tracy, when we left the last segment, you were talking about the film series that you've put together, you've curated it, and I cut you off midstream there. So why don't we go right back? Let's talk about the film series and how you're using film to bring people together and examine these important social justice issues. Um, yeah, so we uh, created this, uh, with the Wild and Scenic Film Festival, uh, we created this film block called Representation Matters. Uh, and it really shows a variety of films and stories, personal stories of people from around the country and the world, actually. I think there's one or two that are international, um, about people overcoming incredible odds uh, and overcoming, really, we're talking about uh, you know, issues of, of racial inequality uh, to, to make a change. Um, and I'll tell you, when we're watching these films, half of them were, were laughing, half of them were crying. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very powerful, um, but they're inspirational. And again, it's, you know, what you're talking about, you know, a, a young girl who decided that having waste in her neighborhood in Connecticut when, you know, the next fancy town over, of course, would never have it. You know, she went and she actually, her voice mattered. There's a film called w Words Have Power that, that uh, involves her. And you really, you watch her and you think, wow, I could be doing more, you know? Um, there's, there's a, there's a whole, there's something for everyone. And so we decided that we would create two programs. One is an educational program for schools because right now, again, we, we always try and think about what are the needs in the community. And right now schools are struggling with programming. I mean, it's so hard. They're online, then they're in, you know, then they're, they're back in the classroom, yeah. then, you know, they're back online again and they're half and half. And, and so we wanted to create something that was flexible as well as affordable and something that the kids would get a little bit of a break. You know, there's no field trips, there's no extracurricular activities. And so we look at these as virtual field trips for children because they are environmental, um, you know, beautiful sort of, you know, escapes for a little bit and you really do see some beautiful things, you know, whether it's skiing or you're in a, the woods or hiking or mountain biking, whatever. Um, and so there are things that the children will relate to, but they all have incredible messages with discussion prompts and things like that for teachers so they can actually have conversations or create essays or whatever. So we have this environmental program for schools uh, and they're uh, blocked by, um, you know, elementary, middle school and high school. And so they're targeted specifically for the age groups. And they're a way to kind of, you know, inspire activism in the next generation because, frankly, it's their future, yeah. especially the climate. And then the other one um, is this representation matters, um, which we we created for the schools, uh, and that was the block of films about diversity um, and the intersectionality of, of racial injustice and the environment. But um, we found that they became so uh, successful and appealing that we were approached by some companies that wanted to use the film block for diversity training. And so now we've expanded and so we have a program with this Representation Matters block uh, for companies. Because again, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of diversity training and you're reading an article or you're looking at a pie chart, but these are stories, real personal real stories. Life. And it's much, you know, it's much easier to relate to, it's easier to start a conversation about, and it gives you the language to have those difficult uh, talks. And they, um, you know, so, so we've, we've evolved completely into a different direction, but we're really, it's really fulfilling. And now we're working on a third one for next year, which will um, be women's voices. Okay. And Tracy, you talk about how people have reacted to these films when you first saw them. You talk about the laughing, you talk about the crying, you talk about the emotions that it brings forth. That's really what the arts are all about, isn't it? It, it affects different people a different way, but you're trying to inspire them to do something. And in this right. case, as you said, you're taking it into the classrooms, you're taking it into the corporate boardrooms, mm -hmm. and it's trying to inspire change. Right. At what point in, in, in a child's life, you know, is it, is it time to start getting them in, inspired by the arts and activism? Um, well, I can just speak as a mom myself. Sure. My girls both were uh, involved in the theater from a young age. Uh, I, you know, one has a beautiful voice and she clearly gravitated. The other was shy. And so I really put them both in for different reasons. And I feel like the arts, whether it be performing like that, you know, it really helped my shy girl 
come out of her yeah. shell a little, and my other one just, you know, it just wanted to kind of showcase her, her talents. Um, you know, so it worked for two completely polar opposite children. Um, you know, other people like to express themselves through art. I mean, you know, therapists use art with children. Right. You know, it's just, it's a, I like to think of it as a soft sell too, you know. It's a much gentler way to get a point across. Uh, and so I think whatever the medium is, it could be dance, it's whatever touches you. Everyone's right. touched by something, it could be music, you know. It doesn't matter, it's, it's a matter of, of connecting again, um, getting off whatever your screen is. Um, you know, when we first launched the company, we, one of the lines that we said all the time was, we want to get people off their couches and engaging with each other. So obviously we want them to stay on their couches right now, right, right. but still there's still so have many that same feeling, that, that same sense of togetherness exactly. through the arts. That feeling of Main Street. I, I, exactly. And again, let's talk about the intersection between the activism and the arts, and you're not just, you don't want people just to watch the films, watch the, the listen to the music, you want them to participate. Mm. Is, is that sort of one of the core tenets of Main Street Pops as well? Absolutely, Getting, absolutely. So from the little ones, you know, we have recycled art projects that, you know, we have some suggested art projects that they can do afterwards. Uh, whatever it is that, you know, there's so many ways and we do have resources available that we can offer people, but yeah, it, it, the whole idea is to inspire you to make a change, to do something, to think differently. Even if it is just having a conversation or understanding someone better, or hopefully giving money or time to, to something or one of these, you know, and each one of these stories and voices address different things. So, you know, giving your time or money to whatever touches you. When we talk about making change, no change is too small, is it? I mean, we can all make a difference and that's important in our communities. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and how are we changing that message from, from the youngest ones to the folks, the seasoned boardroom members, you know, these corporate titans, letting them know that their change, their voice matters? How does Main Street Pops kind of diversify that conversation? Well, I mean, I think uh, we, we work with, well, certainly with the films, you know, we work with Wild and Scenic to curate what would, make, what would touch and make sense for those particular groups. Um, but a lot of them are quite universal. Uh, Again, I think it's a matter of entertaining and, you know, we try to pick inspiring and uplifting films about overcoming um, and not too heavy. We try and use the, the most of them are shorts, film shorts, um, because, again, it, it, we want the soft sell. We want it to go down easy. Um, and, you know, and, and we've also worked very much with artists, which we haven't gotten into yet. Right. Um, but, you know, we have a whole art program as well, which is more of the visual arts. Uh, Again, it's just sharing people's stories and their voices and their perspectives and hoping that it opens all of our eyes and we just become a more uh, empathetic people, especially these days. <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about in the third segment. Yeah. And Tracy, as we run out of time in the second segment, I want to make sure I don't forget to ask you, how do people find out more about Main Street Pops? Oh, very important. Um, <laughs> www.mainstreetpops.com. Um, we're also on um, Facebook and Instagram as well. Okay. So. Tracy, this is a great conversation so far. We're going to go into a third segment. We're going to talk about politics a little bit. We can't lose sight of the fact that today is Election Day, and Election Day matters all across this country. By the time folks are watching this in a couple of days, the count may still be going on, <sighs> and we're going to talk yep. about that in the, in the third segment. But, folks, I, I appreciate you tuning in today. I appreciate Tracy coming in and jumping in with us. We're going to be back in the third segment. Thank you. Stevens Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson Mall is your one stop for all your automotive needs. Check out Ford's latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with its stylish looks and hybrid options, or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off-road terrains with trail control. Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. Stevens, Jersey City Ford, 201-432-7272.
Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Hi, and welcome back to Tapped into Hudson. I'm Steve Lennox, and I'm the publisher of Tap into Hoboken, Tap into Jersey City, and Tap into Bayonne. I'm excited today that I've been joined by Tracy Gavant, the co-founder of Main Street Pops. Tracy, we're having a great conversation here. And, and we said in the last segment, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that today is election day. Just voted. Just good, 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 <laughs> good. Um, when we're watching this show in a couple of days after production, it's still going to be counting the votes probably. But, but I, I find that the arts and politics, there's a lot of intersection there, isn't there? Absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, it's actually very relevant because we have an opening tomorrow night. Um, with, uh, we just uh, are about to launch, we've actually come kind of full circle because after the, film, the virtual film festivals, which we're still doing, um, Pilsner House, uh, Vince Chrysler, who's the CEO of Pilsner House, uh, he had you know, seen what we were doing all, all year, and again, we've been around a year, but we were loud and proud, so. Um, and uh, he approached us and, and had heard a lot of what we had been doing and wanted to create uh, an arts program at Pilsner House. Uh, sort of create this community gathering place, you know, connect more with, with Hoboken. Sure. Um, and so he approached us and asked us if we want to partner with him. So we were thrilled because they have incredible space there, outdoor, indoor, upstairs, you know. So for now, as well as in the future, they have lots of COVID friendly um, spaces now, but you know, um, we saw this as a wonderful pop-up home for us. And so we'll be doing some pop-up events. So the one we are actually having the opening night tomorrow night, we're hoping people, even though, Everyone's stressed out about the election. It, it would be actually this would be a very refreshing and inspiring um, escape because um, we are showcasing a local Hoboken artist, Brittany Vogel, mm -hmm. who has created this powerful women's series, um, and she profiled uh, exceptional women in history, uh, and she has sort of this collage in the background with with different images and newspaper clippings and things from the his their history. Uh, of their life and their career, and then she does an actual sketch over at them. And um, so we're doing this opening tomorrow night it, from November 4th through the 30th. Uh, it will be on display at the Winter Garden at Pilsner, which is kind of an open air hybrid mm -hmm. space where you can open up all those doors. Um, and so it'll be a very easy place to, to view these. Uh, but the women are so inspiring themselves. I mean, one of them is Susan B. Anthony. Right. So, you know, our social media posts have yeah. been like, Susan says vote, you know, with the, with the image of that particular piece of art. But um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is another one, Nancy Pelosi, um, Harriet Tubman, and uh, the coronavirus uh, heroine, you know, sort of in this powerful sure. pose. So talking about the strength of women, and that's another topic, obviously, um, that has really come to the forefront. Uh, and being that we are a women-owned, you know, three powerful women of our own, um, you know, we're hoping that this inspires people. Uh, and you're doing it in a way to let everybody know it's not just women that should be no. inspired by these wonderful, powerful women. It's it's men, it's it's girls, it's boys. I mean, we all have something to learn from the struggle that Susan B. Anthony went through and, and what Ruth Bader Ginsburg did for this country just up yeah. until a few weeks ago. I mean, she, she fought for this country until yeah. the day of her death. Yeah. And this is something you're really bringing to life through Britney's art at, at the Pilsner House, and that's, yeah. that's incredible. She, and yeah, Britney's done, um, she also did a suffra suffragette mural uh, at the Turnstile Market in Manhattan. I mean, so this is an area that obviously she feels very strongly about as well. But yeah, it's absolutely celebrating powerful women. And you know, I, I, you know I've been saying, you know, like for the, everyone, you know, for the powerful woman in your life, there's actually uh, the original art as well as um, hand-signed prints are for sale. You know, and I am already thinking, hmm, I, yeah, I have two daughters. Um, you know, one's college age, one's high school age, and they are 
very turning into very powerful women. So I was thinking, mm, I should get them a print for the holidays. You know, yep. I mean, it's it's something that, you know, male, female, it doesn't matter. It's just about celebrating people that are strong and powerful and and speak their mind and, right. and you that know inspire. fight for what they believe in and then inspire whatever that is that you know makes your heart sing. You know, you've got to. Right. When we talk about inspiration and we talk about a change in community and, and things are gonna change over the next few weeks no matter how this election goes, I think we all know there's mm. change coming down the way. How do organizations like Main Street Pops make sure that the arts are a part of that change and why does it matter that the arts are a part of that change? Um, again, I'm a strong believer in the arts for any community uh, and whether it be for change or whether it be for escape or whether it be for just enjoyment, um, it's, it's through, Ever since I can remember, I mean, you, you could literally look at history through art, you know? Everything is reflected in art. The times, um, the roles that have changed, even the changing roles. Um, you know, art is a conversation starter, really. It's a conversation starter and it's a uh, community builder and it's a connect connector. Um, so in whatever form it is. So who knows, maybe we'll do dance next, but. That's that great. <laughs> I won't be doing um, the two-step or anything, you know, but. And the arts are, you know, can be a lot of things, you know. Um, we're actually, in December, we are also at Pilsner as, as part of this um, new program, we'll be doing an artisan like holiday gift uh, fair or, you know, market, I guess, outside. Um, so we will have heaters, but definitely wear your coats. Uh, but again, celebrating artisans. So that's, you know, jewelers and people that, you know, sketch and, and create things, hand painted things, and it's called whatever, you know. Um, it's all about makers. That's uh, right. So. You're hitting the nail on the head there, Trace. I think when we keep going back to what is art, and that's a question that has been asked mm -hmm. through the generations and, and you know, throughout, throughout history, it's, it's creators. I mean, we're making art right now in some ways, aren't we? Right. It, it's not the traditional, it's not what you're gonna be showing at the Pilsner House, but this is art, and we're bringing it to the screens. Just, let's just go back to in the final two minutes, the, the importance of continuing to create art and how important that is. And, and have we lost anything in the past six months? I mean, the, the inspiration is still there, but we haven't been able to display the art as much. How has that sort of affected Main Street Pop's trajectory and where it's gonna go in the coming months? Um, well, you know, now we're starting to, everyone's starting a little bit to come out of their shell and then go back in and whatever. And that's why I think it's important to be flexible and be able to pivot. Uh, and, you know, you, writing in a journal is art, you know, um, singing a song, I, you know, I, I think that, there has been art via Zoom. I mean, it's not as effective that way, but you know, there's some of those, uh, you know, Broadway casts that have sang songs with the Zoom. Right. You see all their little faces, whatever. Yeah, it's not quite the same, but it's still, it's all art. Uh, and I believe there's a lot of art being done. I mean, we're all kind of stuck inside more. Um, there's probably a lot of art that's going to come out of this, whether that be a film, a screenplay about you know two people stuck in inside mm. for too long, or whether it be a painter is doing third, you know. A whole bunch of paintings and got inspired. I know for me, I I've just redone you know the decor in my whole house just because you, you you're sitting around, you have more time and less distractions right. in a way. So it's an opportunity for you to find your art, whatever that is, you know, whatever that art may be. Yeah, yeah. And, and Tracy, so we deal with students, we deal with senior citizens, we deal with everybody in between. They're all creating this art. Main Street Pops, I, I guess, will continue to be there to put it out there. This is great that you joined us here today. This has been such an inspirational conversation for me. Um, I want to thank you for joining us. Just tell us one more time, how do people find Main Street Pops and how do people get inspired by the arts and continue to exercise their art? Uh, MainStreetPops.com yep. um, and, Main, and Main Street Pops on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can also email us at info at Main Street Pops if you're a maker or a creator and you want to get involved in our gift market. We still have some vendor spots left. Um, and we're always looking, you know, we're open to ideas and, uh, you know, we just, got to keep moving forward and expressing ourselves. I think it's, it's a form of therapy for a lot of people too. So whatever, whatever works for you, whether it be escaping through art or doing art, Perfect. go for it. <laughs> Tracy, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Viewers at home, thank you so much for joining us here today. Again, stay healthy, stay safe, stay apart. We'll see you all soon.